Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of Foreclosurepedia Podcast. Foreclosurepedia Podcast, presentation of the Foreclosurepedia Radio Network, which premieres each Sunday evening, 2300 hours. Uh, it's Thanksgiving. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we happen to have a contractor, a good friend of mine, Dennis Corso, owner of Cedar Grove Interior Specialists. Over, uh, he's out of uh, uh, New Market, Tennessee, and uh, he, he dropped in. He actually, he's like the rest of us contractors. He had to do work, had to do work today on Turkey Day. You know why he had to do work? Because of this map that you're looking at right now. The unholy and ungodly alliance between the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development in private corporations. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake what you're looking at in front of you right now is the problem. But that's for another as for another show that we actually have coming up towards December. This evening I wanted to actually speak with Dennis just a little bit and get some impressions from him. Uh, you guys have heard my points of view and how this contract has really impacted our model and we've had to shift into a pre-conveyance mode. Uh, both uh, Dennis and I have, have worked for many in the industry, uh, city side, A to Z, field services, et cetera, ad nauseum. Uh, Dennis is, is well aware of the fact that uh, there's going to be a 62% cut in, uh, in the routine pricing and a 29% cut on the initials. And, so if you don't mind, Dennis, I'm, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions this evening. And uh, first... I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Yeah, so so first, when you're looking at this cut in price, and, and let, let, let's talk a little bit, the routines. For example, you're going to have to do a lawn cut. You're going to have to clean the house. You're going to have to document everything and they want you to do this for forty dollars what comes to mind when I ask you to do something like that for that price it's not gonna happen <laughs> I fully agree and and uh, so 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 do the members I mean, this the isn't, I mean you can laugh while you want it's not a negotiable issue this is a uh, uh, when you realize the backdrop of what's going on that's uh, uh, strikes me as um, uh, a so-called small company or a small corporation, uh, self-proclaimed small corporation, uh, pushing the small contractor, you know, out of the game for for whatever reason, uh, multiple stipulations, whether it be insurances that that are new and strange and uh, extremely costly to the small businessman. And then on top of it, you have the uh, the looming issue of Obamacare and uh, health uh, uh, health insurance in the in the on the back burner. Um, companies are already taking steps to to make changes in their in their uh, invoicing uh, percentages that are having to be raised. Uh, uh, so I'm I'm actually glad you brought that up. Now that, that's an interesting interesting point today with the pricing that's come out that has developed from HUD 3.6 do you feel you would be in a a worse position to be able to hire anybody do you feel this pricing model will effectively end your ability to hire laborers who need work well it's I'm not even gonna I, I don't even need to answer that question it just it comes down to uh, when I look over everything I'm just going to have to shift into pre-conveyance uh, work from here on out after the first because I'm not going to tolerate uh, uh, lengthy turnaround times for being paid, number one. Number two, a severe pay cut and while I'm out there busting my ass and uh, these guys are making six, seven, ten times what I'm making pushing paper sitting behind a fucking desk. I'm sorry, but that's just... What Dennis is talking about is, you can see down here on the cursor, PK Management specifically is down along in here. They're based out of Miami, Florida. Dennis and I work this section, if you trace down here, is predominantly known as East Tennessee. PK Management 
in a fell swoop has taken over 6A, taken over 4S, they have two other contracts. This small region alone that he's talking about pays one billion with a B dollars. Now the state of Tennessee in fiscal year 11, which is the last one we have records for, fiscal year 11, the state of Tennessee had 12,998 properties. If you factor in the price of those properties for maintenance, $40 for the routines, $325 for the initial, and go ahead and let everybody, like he was talking about, the, the desk surfers and the paper pushers, go out to Hooters once a week. You're still only, only maximum at $20 million. So we have a profit margin of $980 million. Does that upset you, Dennis? It's, it's messed up. Do you feel... I want to know where that money's going, number one. Number two, I mean, it's pretty apparent when uh, things, and I mean, I realize that that the uh, A to Z office, which is where I do the, the majority of my business right now and who I work for the majority of the time, has has tapered down their, their payments on certain things like uh, pool drain and pool draining and pool tarping. Pool, pool, uh, there's no more money now uh, as of uh, November 7th, I believe. No more money being paid to field vendors for pool tarping, period. We have to supply our own pool tarps and pay for our own pool tarps out of the $480 for the initial services that's paid. Even though when I get the work order, uh, kick back to me after I do the initial inspection and my work order comes back saying bid the pool drainage we need a we need a bid for pool draining A to Z says well we don't pay anything we just want you to drill some holes and take some pictures for no additional uh, pay whatsoever so I've got to incur the cost of uh, my labor my insurances my time draining a pool, I realize it's not rocket science, the point of it is that we used to get paid for that. And then if they think that, that that we used to get paid too much for draining a pool, it's all relative. There's more things than, the, if you look at the bigger picture, it's about insurance, it's about maintenance, uh, uh, maintenance fees on your vehicle, it's about the cost of gas is uh, twice what it was uh, just four years ago. Um, no set on that. So. You know, the, they can say, well, it's just drilling a few holes in the, in the, in the pool to, to drain the water. We used to get paid for it. Why are we not now? I don't know, but somebody must be either skimming the money. I don't believe that HUD's not paying them. I believe that they are, they're somewhere in the middle that the money is being uh, expunged and being uh so anyway and then when, when, and, and enough on that looking at the hud 3.6 and and you and i both concur in the fact that we are not going to participate in the model as it is currently uh been awarded to to the awardee pk management looking at the model though do you feel that contractors, specifically those of us whom are both doing field service preservation work and inspections, ought to be able to meaningfully participate in, in the negotiation process or at least have some input. Do you, do you feel that would, that would help at all? Well, listen, um, this is not the only business that I've that I that I own or that I've managed and are taken a and and by owning a business I don't mean that I just have uh, people work for me that get paid uh, in a subcontractor uh, type of uh, situation. Um, I find that I do the best work with myself and one helper, so that uh, my business is my company is about me and a helper. It's mostly about me. It's my service, my quality, my dedication to quality of work, my reliability, the fact that if I can't perform a job like I thought I could before uh, getting involved with it, I call my, uh, my either my homeowner, if it uh, has to do with uh, 
uh, certain other services that I perform in my other businesses, or uh, if it's, it has to do with preservation services, then you know, then I call my management uh, people and let them know that um, that this contract is going to run over. It can't be it can't be brought in at the at the guaranteed date. It's going to run over a day because either the house is just um, just so, too dirty and needs too much work, number one, or it's just too involved and what they've asked is, it's just going to simply run over. So I make communication with either a homeowner, if it's on uh, the type of work that I do besides preservation service work, or if it's preservation work, then I call the, I call my manager and let them know that, that it's going to run over. You know, it's just, it's just about, it's just about responsible, uh, responsible business management but the, the, what I was getting, you know, the, the point I was trying to make is that my, my company runs about, it's, com, company runs about uh, on itself, which has to do with me going out there, bringing a helper along, and that's how it, uh, that's how it flourishes most so, so do you feel though that the contractor is currently in the field right now? How the, how the HUD contract is negotiated is between the prime contractor, in this case PK Management, and HUD. Do you feel we contractors in the field should be able to give input before HUD awards those contracts? Well, right, absolutely. What I was trying to get to in a roundabout manner was that the fact that. If it's a homeowner, then I'm going, to, I'm going to negotiate a price for a service, and uh, I feel that I should just, uh, you know, uh, that I should have that same ability um, to negotiate a price for services uh, for doing preservation work. It should be no different. The HUD contract, as it has always been, and as it is now utilizes two sets of funds, both of which are taxpayer monies. The first set of funds are funds that are, are set aside anyway for the HUD budget. The second set of funds are funds that were obtained by and through several stimulus programs in the Obama administration. If you could separate yourself for a moment from Dennis Corso, the business owner, to Dennis Corso, the United States citizen whom pays taxes. So for a moment, I'm gonna ask you a question as a citizen. Does it upset you when you hear that 980 million of your tax paying dollars are going to line the pockets at a profit level, which is both obscene and unholy? Does that upset you? I don't. I don't think that uh, that that question really needs me to answer it. I mean, of course, it's of course it's upsetting. Why? Well, it's, it's obnoxious. I, I ask that be, because I I am extremely extremely upset as are a lot of the contractors, and, they, and that's for a no, whole another part in the series where we're gonna we're gonna get down. Foreclosure Pedia is going to get down to the brass tacks. You're hearing it tonight, the 22nd of November, 2012, at 2148 hours. We have submitted an official Freedom of Information Act request to Craig Carnes, the procurement officer in Atlanta, Georgia. And this is something I've always found fascinating. Look, right here, Atlanta, Georgia. Now, how in God's name did this office become able to sign contracts for all this. So we're going to find out with this Freedom of Information Act request. We're going to put it right back here on podcast. We're going to have Dennis Corso, I, I hope. I hope he'll come over in the future. We're going to do some great podcasts. We're going to talk about the industry. We're going to talk about how things are getting done. And I'm going to do a couple of specials with Dennis because as Dennis uh, eloquently put earlier, Dennis actually uh, has made his bones in the construction industry. And so I think all of us can learn a great deal, perhaps with tool tips and, and techniques and an ongoing series on that. 
on the other side of foreclosure pd and on the podcast in our paid section dennis actually has his own monthly program that he puts out with that said there's been another edition of foreclosure pd podcast i appreciate everybody for tuning in this evening if you have any questions comments always give us a shout out at coo at foreclosurepedia.org. Y'all have a good one. Thank you.